Hey everyone! Today I'll be teaching you some of the vet terminology that you might come across when you're working with animals and how it relates to reptiles. That way, the next time you talk to a vet, you might recognize some of this terminology and know what it means. Before we really get into some of the more confusing terms, I want to start with something a little bit easier because I'm actually going to be referring to it throughout the video, so I want you to know what it means. A quadruped is an animal that walks on four legs, quad referring to the number four, so quadruped meaning it's an animal that walks on four legs. Pretty easy to remember, but you compare that to a biped, like humans are bipedal animals, that means that they walk on two two legs. Snakes are a little bit different in that they have no legs, but I'll still be using the terms quadruped and biped or bipedal animals throughout today's video. Let's start with the coelom. The coelom is the main body cavity in animals. It's a fluid filled sac where the organs develop and the fluid kind of helps uh, provide a shock barrier almost to the organs inside and protects them from uh, quick movements and allows them to wiggle around a little bit. It just gives them a little bit of insulation basically. In mammals, the coelom is divided into three categories, each protecting an organ or a group of organs. The cavities protect the thorax, the heart, and the abdomen in mammals. Reptiles, on the other hand, have just a single coelomic cavity. That means they only have one fluid-filled sac on the inside where all of their organs develop and hang out together, basically. That gives them a little bit more flexibility to where the organs can move around. Not saying that the heart can move all the way down here, but uh, there's just a little bit more wiggle room since they're not confined to separate cavities like they are in mammals. Next, let's compare dorsal to ventral. The term dorsal refers to the back of an animal, and the term ventral refers to the belly of an animal. Sometimes people think that dorsal refers to the top and ventral refers to the bottom, which it kind of does. If the animal has its belly facing down, then that does work. But if you think of us people, our top part is, you know, you'd think the waist and above, that's not the dorsal part. Our dorsal part is the back and the ventral is the belly. So I guess if a human was laying on their belly, then dorsal being up and ventral being down would work. But just, just remember that dorsal means back and ventral means belly. Next, let's compare cranial to caudal. Cranial refers to the head end of the organism, whereas caudal refers to the tail end of that animal. Uh, if you ever see a fish diagram where it's labeling all of the fish's fins, you can actually see a lot of these terms used to name the various fins on the fish. For example, their caudal fin is their tail fin, and the dorsal fin is the fin up on their back, whereas the ventral fin is down on the bottom. The terms cranial and caudal are used synonymously, or they're, they have the same meaning to anterior and posterior in quadrupeds, and it also works the same with snakes, too. So that means that anterior refers to the front half of the snake, which is also called the cranial half of the snake, whereas posterior refers to the back end of the snake, or the uh, caudal end of the snake. In bipedal animals like humans and apes and gorillas, the anterior side is the belly side, just like the ventral side is, and the posterior side is the back side of that animal, just like the dorsal side is. The next one seems obvious, but a lot of people mix it up. Right and left. Right refers to the right side of the animal, not the right hand side that you're looking at. And left, of course, is the left side of the animal itself. Next, let's look at proximal versus distal. These are, these are relative terms. Proximal refers to something that is closer to a point of interest or a reference point, And distal refers to something that is further away from a reference point. So exa for example, the toes of this Lichianus gecko are distal to its elbow meaning its toes are further away from like the midline or the center of its body than the elbow is. The elbow, therefore, is proximal to the toes. In other words, if that was kind of confusing, proximal refers to things that are closer to the torso, whereas distal refers to things that are further away from the torso. So your finger is distal to your wrist, which is distal to your elbow, which is distal to your shoulder like what she's on right now. And the reverse would also be true. Your shoulder is proximal to your elbow, and which is proximal to your wrist, and so on and so forth. For the next one, you need to know what a median plane is. And that's basically the midline down the middle of your, or down the middle of the animal's body. Now the terms we're going to use that refer to this are medial and lateral. 
Medial refers to a point that is closer to the midline, whereas lateral refers to a point that is further away to, from, from the midline. For example, if we have a red dot here on the Lichianus gecko and a blue dot over here, the red dot is medial to the blue dot, meaning it's closer to the midline than the blue dot is. And vice versa, the blue dot is lateral to the red dot, meaning it's further away from the midline than the red dot is. In other words, our arms are lateral to our torso, and our torso is medial to our arms. Make sense? Hopefully? Maybe? We've covered pretty much all of the harder ones now, so let's do a couple of easier ones. <laughs> She's making this difficult on me. Uh, the next two terms are superficial versus deep. Superficial refers to areas that are closer to the skin, and deep refers to areas that are further down within the body of the animal. So if you think about it, you've probably heard the saying like a superficial wound, which means it's a wound that just kind of hits the surface of the skin. Whereas a wound that goes past the skin and into the muscle tissue would be considered more of a deep wound. And finally, this one's kind of unrelated to the others, but it's still one that you'll probably come across in owning any reptile really, and this has to do with their mouth. The upper jaw of any animal is referred to the maxilla, whereas the bottom jaw is called the mandible. So the maxillary teeth are the teeth on the upper jaw, and the mandibular teeth are the teeth on the lower jaw. That's going to be all the terms that we cover in today's video, so now it's time for a quiz. We've got two dots here on this Lichianus gecko. The red one is on her midline, down her spine, and the green dot is on the front right toe. So, where is the green dot in relation to the red dot? Is it cranial or caudal to the red dot? And is it medial or lateral to it? Let me know in the comments below, and the first person to guess it right, I will pin your comment. And if you like this type of video, because I know it can get kind of confusing with all this terminology, but if you liked it and would maybe like a sequel someday with more advanced terminology, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching today's video, and we'll see you next time.